In our current day and age, there are those who would say that there is a crisis in meaning. But like I said, it's depending on who you ask. As a metaphysician myself, which is a branch of philosophy, the concept of meaning is critical. Even further, for any body of work to perpetuate itself into the future, the ideas of what we mean by the things that we say have to have some type of consistency and consensus. Before we can tackle that endeavor, however, I'll ask this question. What is meaning? With the breakdown and rejection of our traditional cultures and religions, many people have set out to reestablish the framing of their reality. Some even going so far as to outright reject all boundaries and defining limitations. From the concepts of moral relativism, which tends to alleviate people of the idea of good or bad or right and wrong, all the way down to some of the darker parts of the occult and philosophy where nihilism has become endemic. Without those defining lines, however, it's difficult to determine one thing from the next or what anything means specifically. As a result, we now have many people who cling to the idea that the planet is flat, that the Anunnaki are going to return with Nibiru, or even those who would settle for nihilism and outright claim that nothing has any meaning at all. Meaning. What does meaning mean? Interesting question, and it's one that far too many would fail to consider as they attempt to find meaning and reframe reality. Most would think that when we observe the world, whether internally or externally, that we are viewing things. Objects out there the way they are. More accurately, we observe things based upon their function in relation to the idea of ourselves and the meaning they invoke for us. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's take, for example, a tree stump. In and of itself, on a certain level of analysis, it is the remnants of a once thriving tree. That most would consider to be obvious, even if they can't necessarily articulate it that way. On another level of analysis, it is a chair. In fact, the idea of someone sitting upon a tree stump isn't at all outlandish. Even still, what do I mean when I say it's a chair? What is a chair? If this idea can include something such as a tree stump, we're going to have to dig a little bit deeper to figure out what it means when we say a chair. Dig deeper into phrases like take a seat or what it even means to say sit down. Questions like these will ultimately lead us into digging deeper into the idea of what we mean when we say a chair. A chair is a thing for sitting. The meaning of the word is embedded in its use, and that meaning is part of what we see when we see that tree stump. Being able to see that meaning allows us to map our body to that tree stump and use it in a similar fashion to how we would use a bench in a park or a cushion on the ground, even a pew in a church. We see the world as meaning and function, even when we're classifying and framing it as apparent objects. Here, however, is where the controversy arises. Without knowledge of what meaning is and how it is embedded within our perception of reality, for those who are in search of meaning about existence and how to properly act within the world, the practice of constantly rejecting defining lines between objective and subjective will erode away any possible conception of a viable reality. Said differently, getting rid of all limitations will effectively reduce reality back to nothingness and leave the perceiver lost in their own unexamined agreements and drown their conception of self in the infinite waters of reality at large. These unexamined agreements are layered in their expression and tend to extend out from one into the next. Said differently, the agreements that we make beget more agreements and so on and so on and so on. Extending from the depths of our beliefs up to the surface of the knowledge 
that we would readily claim to know.